Okay, so today uh, I'm not going to show anything in the van, but what I'm going to talk about is uh, doing your registration, converting it from a commercial vehicle into an RV or motorhome. So that information for me is going to be specific to the state of California. So if you're in another state, you'll have to look through your state's process for doing that. So section E of two, form 256A, uh, certification of vehicle for human habitation defines uh, human habitation is a living space, which includes, but is not limited to, closets, cabinets, kitchen units, or fixtures, and bath or toilet rooms. So as long as you have something like that in your van, it would qualify to be converted to a van camper. And so it's pretty easy. You basically just uh, have a bed, a toilet, a sink, and as long as it has a permanent structure look to it, um, that that would be sufficient. If it's something you could just take in and out, they're not going to qualify that. Uh, it has to be a permanent work done. Uh, so then the next step is to um, download Form 256A from California and Form 256. So in 256A, and I'm going to put the form up on the screen here for you, you fill out the very top line, which is license plate number, your VIN, and your year and your make. And then you're going to go down to section E, which is the certification of vehicle for human habitation. You're going to check the third box down. This vehicle was permanently modified and then check converted to a motorhome. And the modification was completed on whatever date you finished it on. Um, you don't have to fill out the cost of anything. I didn't do any of that. And then you'll, I waited to sign this document until I was present in front of the DMV officer. And then in form 256, that a lot of sites don't mention this form, but form 256, again, you're gonna fill out the top line, which is the, this is a statement of facts form. Um, you're gonna uh, include your license plate number, the VIN, and the year make of your, your vehicle. And then on page two, you're gonna go to section E, and you're gonna check the body type changed from block, and you're gonna put VN to VC. So VC is a camper. And then in statement G, or in G, the statement of facts, I, the understand state, and then the DMV uh, officer particularly told me, I converted my commercial vehicle to a motorhome. So I wrote exactly what he told me to do. First, first they're gonna tell you, you gotta get your vehicle inspected. So you'll go back outside and then you'll go into the vehicle inspection line and the, um, the officer is going to check to verify that your VIN number is correct and it matches your registration or your title. And then they're going to look inside the van to make sure you've done the actual conversion and that it meets the standards. Now the, the person that looked in mine, she basically just stood inside and kind of looked around and said, wow, this is great. And so that was the end of the inspection. And then I went back in. I took in my license plates because they're going to replace your license plates. In California, a commercial vehicle has one letter in the license plate, whereas a, uh, motorhomes and residential vehicles have three letters. So that's how they can tell that you have a commercial vehicle is by the license plate. You'll take your license plate, your title, um, and these two forms, and you're going to go into the, um, the DMV back in. So they gave me a ticket to go to the front of the line for the um, appointment. And then uh, it's basically just a matter of waiting. And then I went up to the, to the booth, told the guy what I was doing, converting from a commercial vehicle to a motorhome, and then handed him the forms. He made sure everything was correct, and then I signed them in front of him. And then he gave me my new registration, and then I went over to another window to get my um, license plates and tags. And that was it. It was pretty easy. The only painful part was sitting in the DMV for an hour. After that, I contacted my insurance company because I'm converting it. It's no longer a commercial vehicle and they're going to get notified of that by the DMV. So I went, went to my insurance company and I told them that I converted it and my insurance company is Allstate and they did uh, allow me to do that. Um, one question that they did ask me was that, am I, I going to be living in it? 
And I said, no, because we're not living in it. We're, we're just using it as a motorhome for vacations. So that may be a problem if you're converting your van and you have Allstate and you're, you're intending to live in it, they may not cover it. So the other company that I've heard many people recommend is State Farm, because State Farm will basically insure it for the value of your components and the van itself. Um, Allstate just asked me what I think it's worth, and so I gave them a number and they said, okay. And that was it. So I went in and I changed my policy. I just went in today and signed all the paperwork. It was a van that was a multi-car under my original, because I have my car and I have the van. And then we had to take it off of the the insurance policy and make it just a motorhome policy and it's no longer con considered a multi-car. Uh, the cost for mine was about the same as it was for the commercial vehicle, um, mostly because of my coverage, but I, I went up in value. So whatever the, the van itself was worth, plus my components made it much more valuable. And so I insured it for that amount and that made it, uh, made the cost come up. So why would you want to do this? In California, the, the registration fee that you get charged every year also includes a weight fee for commercial vehicles. And for the ProMaster, it's not really that much. It's $80 a year, but it's, it's just money that you don't have to spend if you converted it. If you were slightly over 10,000 pounds, I think it goes up to 150. If you were doing the Ford Transit or the Mercedes Sprinter that has the dually, um, those are probably just breach the 10,000 mark. If you're a commercial vehicle and you're going by way stations, they may, and you have a commercial plate, they may elect to pull you over if you didn't stop and get weighed. Uh, typically you have to be over 10,000 pounds for that. So it's probably something they don't really enforce that much. Um, the other is your insurance may be cheaper. So for me, my insurance is the same, but my coverage is higher because of the value of the vehicle. And that'll ensure that everything in, in my vehicle is covered if I get in an accident. The other big thing is alcohol. If, you, if you're drinking alcohol or you're carrying alcohol with you and you're in an RV, the rules are different than if you're in a commercial vehicle. So you could have the exact same setup and the fact that it's a commercial vehicle may result in you getting an open container violation if you're drinking inside of your motorhome or RV and they happen to catch you. I mean, that commercial vehicle, not motorhome. Um, there's still, the laws vary from state to state and area to area, so you need to be careful with uh, open containers, uh, unsealed containers. And in some, some counties, even transporting through their county can get you in trouble, even if it's sealed. Some of the dry counties uh, in the south. So yeah, th those are the big three. Uh, saves on insurance, saves on your registration in California, and also uh, alcohol, dealing with alcohol. If you don't drink and you don't really care about the $80 um, price, then maybe it's not that big a deal to you and maybe it's not worth it doing it, but it was fairly easy for me.